Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can process the kind of images that you would take in a restaurant to share with friends and family online. And we're going to do that in Lightroom. To get started with this image, let's look and see what it is that we're actually trying to tell about this story. This image is going to Facebook or to the web. Why I shot this image was I wanted to share with friends and family where I'd been and one of the places I always go in England is Wagamama. And so I wanted to take something that would be indicative of this. So I'm going to start by cropping this image to one to one because that's a really nice crop for Facebook and other places like that. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to click because I have one to one set up. If you don't have one to one in the list, you can enter custom. So you can go in here and grab the enter custom ratio dialog and type one to one and click OK. And that just crops to a square image. And so what I'm looking for is something that is reminiscent and tells the story of where I am. And Wagamama, the star and the text, I've got enough here to tell you exactly where it is that I was. So there's our starter. We're now looking at the image as we're going to post it. The next thing to do is to check the white balance of it. Let's just click on the white balance selector. I know that this here is a white tablecloth, but we've got two competing light sources here. This side is a little bit warmer than this side, so I'm probably going to adjust to this side. So I'm just going to click here and we're warming it up just a little bit. Now I'm thinking that that's a bit too much. I might want to just back that off a little bit. Let's have a look at Expose. You can see that this is under Expose. So I'm just going to drag on the Exposure slider. And I think that since I want to put this just up on the web, I can go up with the Exposure quite a bit. So I've taken this up nearly one and a half stops. Now you can see that in brightening it, we've killed the contrast. I think that we can get the contrast back with clarity rather than contrast. We could adjust contrast, but clarity is going to give us some mid-tone contrast adjustment. And since there's a lot of detail in the mid-tones in this image, I think we'll get a better result by increasing clarity. So I'm going to take clarity up quite a bit, something like about 40 to 45. And that started to improve some of the detail, some of the saturation, as well as some of the sharpness in the midtones. I'm also going to take up vibrance because I want the colors to be boosted a little bit. So I'm taking this up to around 33. Now we need to look at the highlight shadows, whites and blacks. I'm going to take the highlights up a little bit. I really want to say some lightning here. I really want it to look sort of a, almost a high key image once it gets to the web. So I'm really going to crank up the highlights in the image. And I'm also going to open up the shadows. I want a little bit more detail in the shadow area. So I'm just going to increase that a little bit. Now we're flattening out all this color here, but we'll be able to get it back a little bit by adjusting the blacks. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and drag on the black slider. And we need to go to the left because we need to pick up some black pixels. And the first black pixels are appearing at about minus 60, minus 70. So I'm just going to find a point for those blacks where I'm getting the first dots of black on the screen. And I'm going to let go. And that's actually going to have brought back a lot more contrast in the image. And now let's adjust the whites. What we're looking for is some white pixels. So again, holding the Alt or Option key. Well, I've got some white pixels up here. Let's just see. All that detail is up in that area that's catching the light. So I don't really want to adjust whites very much at all. So pretty much this is the story that I want to tell. Of course, I'll want to sharpen the image. So I'll go down to Detail and I'm going to crank the sharpening up quite a bit so I can see it as I work. But hold the Alt or Option key as I check the radius. Well, this image is a little bit on the soft side, so I'm going to crank my radius up quite high to about 1.8 maybe even two. It really is quite soft because I was shooting very close up with a very bad lens for shooting close up. So I'm just going to let go of that. 
and detail. If we take radius up high, generally we'll want to bring detail down to a lower value. And I'm thinking here about 35 looks good. I'm just saying the beginnings of the haloing on the image. And now let's look at our masking. Well, I do want to mask this because I don't want to sharpen areas of flat color, but I do want to sharpen the edges. So here I'm thinking 64, 65 is a pretty good sharpening for this image. And I can just adjust the amount, but really if this is going to the web, I want it really pretty crisp and sharp. So I'm going to settle for something around 100 on the sharpness. So let's see how far we've come. This is the image out of the camera. It's a nice little image for showing where I was and for sharing with friends and family. But you know, this has got a whole lot more punch to it. It's a lot more visually exciting an image. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.